Hey everybody, Adam here with E-Trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hydromax Freshwater RV Pump. This is a 12 volt water pump, so we just have two wires coming out here, and that's what we replaced it with. We had a 12 volt pump here before, and this is going to give us about three gallons per minute and we're replacing it with a three gallon per minute. So we're not really upgrading there, but this one has 55 PSI. The other one only had 40. So the nice thing about the increase in PSI, we're just gonna be able to clean dishes a little bit easier and just take those high pressure showers everybody likes. Before, I kind of just held this around this area just in line with our little hose and it wasn't really getting up to the top. So let's see if we actually get an increase in pressure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that is uh, so 15 PSI jump and before we weren't even getting up there and this just went straight up. So that is a, an extreme, extreme difference and that's exactly what this customer is looking for. We're even seeing an extreme increase in pressure over here. That is very intense. You can kind of just see how it's just shooting off of my hand. That is kind of the pressure that I have at my house to clean my dishes. But one thing to kind of explain the difference between PSI and gallons per minute, we just wanted to get more pressure, but notice how this is kind of going. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that cannot be fixed by just increasing PSI. If you wanted to increase that, we're gonna to have to go a little bit more than a three gallon per minute pump. We have a lot of different options on our website, but right now we're using the Hydromax three gallon per minute pump. And if you really want to prevent this pulsating from happening, what you can do is just increase the gallons per minute. So Seaflow has a lot of options. We have 3.3 .3 gallons per minute, or you can get the big boy, which is 5.5 gallons per minute. One thing to think about though, the more water you're pumping, the more water you're using, the less time you're going to have water when you're off grid. But the other nice thing about just having more gallons per minute, whenever you're taking a shower and someone goes ahead and cleans dishes or whatever, when they turn this on, you're gonna be less affected on that end of the RV just because they're gonna have more water flow. So you'll notice the difference a little bit less. One thing that's really nice about this one is that it's self-priming. Might as well get the one that's self-priming so you don't have to spend all that time priming up your pump. You literally hook it up, you turn it on, it's gonna pump all the way up to it and it's gonna be able to prime six foot vertically and 30 foot horizontally. Basically what that means is right now, it's about from here to up here and that's only about three foot or so. So we're definitely good there. Even if this thing was literally in the bottom of the camper that we're in, we would still be totally fine. And where this pump is and how big this camper is, we're definitely not gonna be 30 foot away. Typically it is placed in the kitchen and kitchens usually around the main center area. So you're not really gonna have to worry about that. And once it's primed, you don't gotta worry about it getting unprimed because it does have a check valve. So it's not gonna back feed and allow that water to backflow through it. It does come with a little filter or strainer, whatever you wanna call it. So that's just gonna make sure no debris goes through your pump and it's just gonna make sure it works plenty good. All we want going through there is water and this is in place just to prevent anything else but water from going through there. Another thing with this that I love right here is the little mountain feet. So these mounting feet, they are made of rubber. So it's going to kind of isolate all that vibrations that you may hear. If you hear them, it's not going to be that loud just because this is going to help limit that feel that you may feel and the sounds you may hear. All in all, the goal here with the customer was to have a little bit more pressure. So we really didn't need more gallons per minute. So we placed a three gallon per minute pump with a three gallon per minute pump. But this one is 55 PSI. That's what I like. I think 55 is perfect. It was 40 before, but just that 15 PSI jump really did change a lot, especially in the shower, which is really important to me whenever I'm camping. So I would suggest if you are planning on kind of staying off grid for a little bit, I think three gallons per minute's good. Yeah, you're gonna have this little pulsing and stuff like that. That's not a huge deal. I'd rather have water than have to deal with this. You know what I mean? So I would definitely say three gallons per minute is gonna keep the water in your tank for a decent amount of time. But if it's only for like a weekend trip and you really want to make sure everything's gonna have plenty of water and not really notice when you're taking a shower and someone's doing dishes, 
you can probably jump up to that 3.3 or 5.5 gallon per minute just because you're not really going to be out there that long but if you want my opinion 55 psi oh yeah if you're performing maintenance maybe just fixing something or just replacing your whole entire water pump you got to find out where it is what i found best to do is run it and see if you can hear it we want to put it a little bit farther away from the kitchen sink because typically it's around that area so i'm going to go in the bathroom here turn on the pump and then run a little bit of water to see so i don't know if you can hear that but that is what we really want to kind of figure out exactly where it's at they're typically near the kitchen so kind of start there and you really got to use your ears to really find out where it's at usually it's behind a weird hidden little panel so we were following the sound we thought it was right next to the hot water heater but it wasn't it was actually over here and again right next to the sink so step one find the pump check before we do the swap we want to see what we're working with before just to give us a base to see if we're increasing our pressure so let me turn this pump on so let's turn this on And a decent amount of pressure. It almost goes up to the vent, not really, but not the best. Now for the sinks, the sinks actually have a decent amount of pressure. Definitely enough to clean some dishes, but the problem really is in the shower. That's what we're really trying to solve here, and that's why we're really replacing this pump. Before we do anything to the pump, we need to cut power. You can do it a bunch of different ways. You can just go and pull a fuse. You can maybe just flip a little breaker on the inside. But what I'm doing, just to make sure everything doesn't have power just in case, is we do have a battery shut off. So I'm just gonna turn that off just to make sure that there's no power running that pump whatsoever. To get all the water out of the lines, if you have a valve like this, it's gonna be very, very easy. So all we gotta do with this valve is just kinda turn it like this. It's gonna cut off the water source and then it's gonna bring it down to this tube, which is just gonna suck in air. But if you don't have one in here, we do have one. So if you are replacing your pump, I highly suggest doing it. But if you don't have one on your pump and you need to take it out right now, just make sure to have a couple little bit of towels and stuff. You'll have a little bit of water trying to come back, but we don't have to worry about that. So now that I turn that valve, it's gonna be taking in air from this tube so now all we really need to do is turn on the faucet and let it run and it's going to take a little bit of time but you'll see some air pockets start to come through pressure is going to go down it's going to start spitting for a while it's going to let this run for a little bit to get all that air out and then a little bit yeah see all that air so it's going to do this for a little bit just let it run until basically nothing comes out but air a little tough to see in there it's kind of a small space so hopefully we get it for you but I'm gonna go ahead and just take this thing off the ground there's just four different screws just so it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to access all the different hoses and such so it is extremely tight in here but basically what I'm gonna do over here this little white little 90 degree there's just a little nut on there. I'm just gonna loosen that and that'll come off. And then on this side, I'm gonna loosen this just because our new pump does come with this piece. So I'm gonna disconnect this and that side and then of course cut the wires, but super, super tight. So I need to get two hands in there to do it. Once all of our connections are cut and all the wires are disconnected, this whole thing, should come right out. Now with the new pump, what we're gonna get, we're gonna get these little fittings, and then we are gonna get another one of these. So we're not using that from the old one, it has a little filter in it, which is nice. So we're not gonna be using these just because all of our fittings are just gonna screw right in, but if you needed these, they just go on the ends like this, and then you can use a hose clamp or whatever to connect your hoses. But we're not using these, so you can put those wherever you want and then of course with any type of water fitting we do want to have some thread tape you need to do this on the threads just to make sure that it's not going to leak so go ahead and wrap those up 
tighter the better. I'm trying to find the end. Stuff is usually pretty interesting to use. It's so hard to find the end, but once you find it, it's pretty easy. There we go. Check that out. So I like to, since we're going to be twisting it this way, I want to wrap it that way just so we're not putting too much strain on it. You don't need a whole lot, but just enough to kind of cover most of those threads. The tighter the better, really, just so it doesn't get all bound up. Once you get that on, I just kind of like to run it over. See how as I'm doing that, the, uh, the threads start to get a little bit darker. So you know it's nice and seated in there. Just, I like doing that, especially when I'm working in tiny, tiny little small spaces, just so it doesn't give me trouble when I'm in there. So you're gonna see two little arrows. They're pointing this way, and when we pull that pump out, it's going like this. So we just basically wanna match what was there before. So this was on this side. Go ahead and take that filter. And we'll just thread the filter on now so we don't have to do it when we're down there. Perfect. So now we can put our new pump in and it actually does have the same footprint so we don't really have to drill any more holes. So basically just gonna connect this side and then connect to that other side right there. And then of course, red is power, black is ground. I am gonna put just twist nuts on there right now. We have a lot of water pumps we're testing out just to see which one's the best for this customer. But what you wanna do is get heat shrink buck connectors, especially if you're gonna leave it and we do have those on our website and that's just going to give you the best connection so i'm going to do all this just because there's literally hardly any room for both of us to fit in there and now we are done everything's connected made sure everything was nice and tight and we have power and ground going to our pump now that we are good we can go ahead and flip the switch and give everything power again now we want to just make sure that it is actually getting power and working properly one more switch I hear something. Okay. So it is definitely working, building up pressure. And now that that's done, I wanna get all these air out of the lines. I'm gonna start with the kitchen sink. That was actually pretty good. I'm gonna leave that running for now and just do the other sinks in the bathroom. Just make sure these are all good. And of course, we're gonna do the shower as well. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Get out of there, air. Get out of there, air. So once all that air is out, you can close everything up. Now we don't have to worry about any air being in on any of our lines. After running it for a little bit, I don't see any leaks, so that is good. Everything's connected, it's all kind of perfect. So we're basically done with the whole entire install. Once we get the air out of lines and everything like that, we can go ahead and put all our panels back so we can have our RV looking like it was before. And that'll do it for a look at the Hydromax RV fresh water pump.